All right, we're here today at my urban worm bag. And we've got kind of a big feeding for them because what we're gonna do is we are gonna kind of do a clean out the freezer feeding and uh, get rid of all our boxes feeding. And one of the things I wanna do is I wanna kind of check deep down in here because in about two weeks, we're gonna put a whole pumpkin inside here. So I just wanna kind of get the whole moisture levels and see if it's ready to get that pumpkin. When we came in here last, we kind of gave them a decent sized feeding and it consisted of an banana peels, onion pieces, lettuce, some lettuce stalks, even some tortillas and small peppers and strawberries, a lot of potato peels, and we topped it off with some really good watermelon. So let's see if they ate it all. And I am feeling a lot of moisture down here. So, and obviously a lot of worms. This is a mango seed. We were looking for it last time, and I think this may be it, but I'm seeing some stuff. This just looks like, you know, either pepper or tomato peels, or or not peels, but the skin of it. But let's dig down. It is super wet down here and right on the edges it's dry, but wow. And okay, so here's some of the bedding that we put in. I know we put a lot of this egg carton bedding and as I look on here, let me see if I can get you some. I am seeing a lot of mites on there and we have been cooling this down with frozen water bottles because we had kind of a heat wave and I think the mites are actually kind of attracted to all that moisture. So I saw a lot of them on the surface, but as we dig down, I am seeing some good fat worms in here. Now this has a mixture of both red wigglers and blue worms. So when you see the really skinny ones, they're either juvenile red wigglers or they are blue worms themselves. But this is really cool in here. It's really dark the lower you go and it doesn't feel too warm at all. It just kind of feels ambient temperature. So that's good. Here is an avocado shell. Let's see if we've got a bunch of worms in there. Oh yeah, sure enough. On one side of the avocado is a bunch of mites and on the other side is some worms. So let's keep digging down. So yeah, I'm feeling a lot of moisture down here. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna kind of mix in some dry bedding. And what that's gonna do is help us to be able to put a pumpkin in here without it just kind of dripping all the way down in there and spilling out the bottom. So it's pretty cool. Here's the other thing. When they say you do your first harvest or so, you may not have complete castings and we're down pretty deep. I don't think we're all the way to the bottom, but I'm seeing a lot of bedding and and I'm seeing some castings. So we may be in a situation where we're not gonna harvest for a while, or we make a few harvests and just put them right back on top. So yeah, look at that. Okay, I think deep down there, I might've gotten a glimpse of one of our temperature sensors. But yeah, let's keep, let's just keep mixing it around. I love this worm bin. You can just like throw things around and I'm nowhere near spilling out the top. And that's just not the case with my other worm bins. There's another avocado shell with some worms and mites in it. So avocado really does take a while to break down and it looks like it needs some help from mites. All right, so a couple of observations while I'm in here. One of the things that I'm really excited about is I've dug down pretty deep and the only smells I smell are like earthy smells. So there are no pop pockets of fermentation or anything like that. So I don't know if it's because the edges are breathable or because we're putting some decent bedding in here, but there's no anaerobicness to any of this bedding and food and they have eaten everything that we gave them, which is fantastic. I am really liking this bin. The other thing is there are a lot of worms in here, but I think this population can grow a lot more to help us really break down some of this stuff. Again, I thought it would be a little bit more broken down at the bottom, but that's kind of not the case. So I think think the worm population needs to grow as well. So what we're going to do is I've kind of hollowed out an area. I'm going to fill this up with some bedding and some dry shredded cardboard, and then we'll put our feeding in. So first thing we'll do is we'll put in a bunch of these cardboard tubes, and then I'm going to add some bedding, and then we'll add some more bedding. All right, now I'm just going to kind of mix this in because I'm not looking to do a feeding right in the middle. I still want to do kind of our top feedings, but at the same time, I want to get this material just a little bit more dry so that when the pumpkin goes in, it can absorb absorb it. Now I know on camera that the bins probably look a lot more drier than they are, but as I touch this, it is, you know, just wet to my hand and it is at a perfect moisture. So let's go ahead and set this up like this. The worms are on a roller coaster. That is for <laughs> absolutely sure. And let's put more stuff in. I don't know how my mom does it, but she always seems to find some crazy bedding. And this looks like paper that is just kind of cut in such a way that it has all these holes in it. And you know, worms, it seems to me, love to go in and out of holes, almost like they're getting their back scratched or <laughs> they're rubbing cocoons off or something. So we're gonna go ahead and put some of this in. And then I'll put a little bit more dry bedding in there. And let's just kind of push that around like that. 
kind of tuck it in just like that. And then here's some of the stuff that we have to feed today. So we've got a lot of pumpkin, looks like just kind of onion, just a smorgasbord of stuff. We've got some banana peels and broccoli. Well, let's just get this stuff out here and we will dump it all around. There's one bag. Here we go with the other bag. And then some pineapple, some really good chunks of pineapple. And the executive producer let me know that I called that pumpkin earlier. So <laughs> I've got pumpkin on the mind for sure. There we go, we got our last bag. Oh, nope, looks like we got a bonus bag of some nasty spinach. All right, so let's just kind of spread this around. Lettuce definitely goes fast. The broccoli does itself, you know, the inside goes fast, but then the outside is a little bit slower. The pineapple goes, you know, it goes slow when it gets down to the fibers, but kind of the liquidy stuff goes pretty quick at first. Banana peels are definitely slow and then oh yeah their favorite got some watermelon and this definitely goes fast very liquidy and they love that and then grapes let me see if i can kind of oh <laughs> oh gosh i should have done this before i froze it but let's crush these grapes up otherwise they could be in here for a while until the worms are able to break the skins of it so this urban worm bag is fantastic look at this surface area it barely looks like i fed this thing but this is certainly a lot of food probably for the number of worms that i have in here so this is looking really good and we've got the executive producer with another save i've got all these avocado shells actually from christmas we had some awesome guacamole from our buddy heather and we're gonna put these in here. But I have a feeling these are going to take a while, especially since I have them on top, but oh well, what can you do? And we go with a new batch of worm chow, and I made this with some expired oats, some almond and coconut flour, and I think some coconut sugar. It's amazing what they can make out of coconuts and almonds. And then in we go in with some coffee grounds, and this is looking like a really good feeding for them, so I'm hoping they're as happy about it as I am. And then finally we'll put in some pulverized eggshells, and I just like to put this in here because they can use it for grit, but also I want to get all these nutrients, calcium and everything else that's in an eggshell into my garden. So here's something I forgot to put in. I was going to put it on the bottom, but eventually it's going to get to the bottom. This is just some leaves from my bonsai trees. And for all of you that wonder if I use any natural bedding, yeah, it's some leaves right there. Look how tiny they are. <laughs> Let me just spread these out a little bit, just like that. And now we're going to put on some wet bedding. So here we go. This is just some bedding that is moistened with our rain barrel water, which I put a mosquito dunk in there. So that will deter the flies. Actually, it doesn't really deter the flies. What it does is it prevents the larvae from turning into flies. So that's why you don't see any kind of fungus gnats or fruit flies in this bin, because we are outside, although we are inside my screen and porch, but I can get some flies and stuff like that that make it in. But luckily, none of them are in this bin. So I'm very happy about that. That. Let's just kind of dump this out. All right, and I think I want to spread it out a little bit on top of everything. And you know what? I'm going to put even more dry bedding on here to just kind of put a layer on top of everything. Now, the executive producer is grinning ear to ear because putting this much bedding in means that there's less boxes in our garage. So I'm taking up less space and she is extremely excited about putting the pumpkin in next time because that was one of the stipulations when she got me this urban worm bag for Christmas. It's that I would put a whole pumpkin in here that has been sitting in our freezer. And uh, she can thank AV for that because he's the one that taught me to uh, gather pumpkins around Halloween time to save them up for your worm bins. So it Looks like we need a new piece of newspaper. So we'll put that on top. And it looks like we've recruited some new plastic too as well. And I love this plastic because what it's going to do is all the moisture from all that food and from the bin that we saw when I dug down deep had all that moisture, it is going to evaporate, hit the underside of this plastic and drip right back down. So the next time we're in here, we'll probably have a uniform amount of moisture throughout the first few inches all the way down to the bottom. And we are going to be ready for the pumpkin. I am so excited. So the next video you see from the Urban Worm Bag is going to be a whole jack-o'-lantern pumpkin from Halloween in here. So hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. That is my temperature sensor. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.